guys like watching wrestling because it's a uh, drama for guys. And then again, if five wall posts say, put your or face, my face on. your face near their crotch. Yeah. That's exactly what I want to see. A whole bunch of Spider-Man crotch right in my face in blue tights. Fuck. Second Rock one is a space ah. grab. They kind of swing by or they're flying by and they see you and they scoop you up and they're holding you by your pants. No, that's not degrading at all. This is my little corner of the world. I'm JRR. Let's have ourselves a fun little time, shall we? Hi there, everybody. It's Double R once again, and today we're covering three topics at once. But how are you supposed to cover three topics at once? You talk forever on one topic, and you usually forget something halfway through. I realize I forget stuff. But the things we're going to cover today: character, our character premise, character development, character evolution. Character development and evolution are going to go pretty much hand in hand, obviously. Character premise is sticking to the character. Pretty much straightforward. Now, the character premise is very hard to fuck up, usually. A lot of people do still fuck it up. I'll, I'll tell you all that right now. A lot of people fuck it up. But if you're playing a canon character, you should know how the character themselves act. If they have a certain way of speaking, you should know how they speak. Example, when I role-played as Rock, no matter what I wanted him to say, no matter what I wanted him to say, I had to make sure I always started the line with the Rock says. The Rock says this, the Great One says that, the Brahma Bull says that, yada, yada, yada. You get the idea. You get the idea. Because I had to stick with the character, the character-isms, which is part of the character premise for The Rock, I had to make sure I kept them. Because if I just started saying, oh, I think this, and I'm going to go over here and do this, and I'm going to do that, most people would be like, that's not The Rock. Nor saying stuff like that would actually help you feel like you're going to do, like you're going to do it right. But when I role-played as The Rock, this is why most of my replies took a while before I can even do it. Because, one, as... For someone who, someone who has no real swagger, I mean, you could take a look at me and be like, he's got no real swagger. Duh. I can kind of tell you that much. But, if you look at me here, and you can go, okay, he doesn't have the swagger, he doesn't have the arrogance, he doesn't have the sabe fair, or whatever the freaking word is, yeah, I can still roleplay The Rock. And most people found that when I was roleplaying The Rock, it was hard to tell The Rock from The Rock. I mean, seriously. Half the people were actually inboxing my version of The Rock, thinking he was The Rock. The Rock. And literally, The Rock. But then again, I'm pretty sure this is people doing a number two issue. Yes, issue number two still comes up. People don't read. But, again, it's because I held to the character premise really, really firmly. Now, with this in mind, there are also notes on character development. The Rock ran into Chucky. The Rock ran into Freddy Krueger. He ran into different mass murderers. He ran into Vegeta. He ran... Oh, yeah, the Vegeta is... Oh, I just gotta tell y'all, this this was funny shit. I ran... As the, as the Rock, I ended up being friends with a Vegeta. I say a Vegeta because, of course, Vegeta is such a popular person that there's probably like 500 of them, 600 Kasumis, 5,000 of them. And you get you get that idea. There's a buttload of people. But I ran into one of the Vegetas, and the guy role-played as Vegeta really fucking well, and he's always pissed off and angry. Well, apparently they got into a discussion, they started arguing back and forth, and of course, The Rock being The Rock. <laughs> yeah, let's just say I had a fun time. I was able to go on for about two to three to five paragraphs of just blasting Vegeta with taunts. Why? Because The Rock would not be sympathetic. He would take something, and he would just pick that person apart by that specific aspect. Now, since Vegeta was shorter than The Rock, and his hair was really, really tall, and he had a widow's peak that was very noticeable, 
I had the rock have a heyday. Out of character, the guy playing Vegeta, which I'm thinking this is like the decline of where the good role plays started ending, because out of character, he was a great guy. Out of character, the guy playing Vegeta was an awesome dude. You 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 kept it in the inbox, he was like, okay, out of character, that shit was fucking funny. But you do understand, as Vegeta, I'm still going to be doing this, 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 and this. And I'm like, hey, cool, no problem, I got it. And we understood each other. Out of character, we understood that this is nothing personal between us. But you got the ego of the rock clashing against the ego of Vegeta. You can imagine where the fuck that went. Especially if I came up with three fucking paragraphs. He came up with five. I had to come up with seven. He came up with nine. Then I came back with five. He came back with two. And we just went at each other. And people loved watching it. Because it was like watching, say, picture a real-life version of Vegeta and the, and the rock just going at each other. Just boom, 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 boom. No microphones. Just black. The rock says you and your three-foot stop. Three foot tall hair, your seven foot tall Will's Peak, your fuck, and he's going off, just doing a fit. Look, look at you. You're you're like two foot nothing with a seven foot hair and nine foot Will's Peak, which the Rock can't even figure out how you got nine feet Will's Peak. How could your Will's Peak taller than you and your hair combined? The Rock doesn't understand this. Please explain to the Brahmin Bull exactly why the fuck you have hair and the Will's Peak that surpasses your height. It's not pop. What's with the booties? No, that's what the booties... No, no. No, Rock says this. Forget about the Widow's Peak for now. What is with the booties? Vegeta, what is with the booties? Just, can you explain that to the Rock? You're probably like, what? Five bucks down at Macy's? Rock says this. He's going to take off one of his $500 shoes. And actually, I went through the whole spiel. Why? Because it was fun, and the guy was loving it, and he came back with his stuff as Vegeta, and I was rolling because it was funny. You can actually see it as Vegeta and Rock arguing. And this this was good roleplay, because both characters kept to the character promise. Out of character, we knew we were just bullshitting with each other. It was no problem. Well, inevitably, Vegeta attacked. It's Vegeta. It was a matter of time. So he threw an energy blast. And Rock rolled out of the way. Rock rolled out of the way. Rock roll. <laughs> oh, I should have really thought about that when I did it initially. Fuck. Oh, well. The Rock did a combat roll out of the way. He wasn't sure what the light was. He didn't care what the light was. He did not want to get hit by that light. Why? Because he doesn't know what the hell it is. That's like seeing a car for the first time. I think I should move. Now, with that being said, again, these characters are keeping to the character promise. That means they were not going, they were not switching over. I was not having the rock suddenly sound like Jericho and going off of some random spat or saying, that's, I'm going to super kick your ass. No, kept with the character promise. The rock was definitely the rock. Vegeta was definitely Vegeta. And everyone could tell and feel that, and that was a great time. And I had no problem. Even when I had to hop off for the night, I told him, hey, I got to go for the night. He's like, okay, cool, we'll pick this up later. I'll actually like the last comment, you can like my last comment, we can come back at it tomorrow. I was like, cool, I actually made notes, made sure to come back tomorrow. And we went at it the second night. Why? Because it was funny. And people loved it, because it, you had a feeling of, okay, I'm actually seeing these two characters, because they're part of the promise. They, both of us kept with our promise. Now, with that being said, Yes, I know it was a big fucking almost eight minute rant about The Rock um, when I was role playing as The Rock. Because it's character premise. This is important. If you can keep things to your character premise, it's all fine and dandy. It's great. If you keep it to the character premise, it's lovely. It's great. People will feel more comfortable. If you're being Kasumi from Rama One Half and you're talking to Hatomi from Dead or Alive and you two are talking about cooking then no one is really going to sit there and throw a fit. No one's going to throw a foul. No one. Why? Because it's both their character premises. It's just how they are. They told me from Dead or Alive, likes cooking. Kasumi from Rumble and Half, likes cooking. Guess what? Common ground. Universes are pretty close together. 
kind of like how Dead or Alive and Rock and Dragon Ball are close together. You see, if things can merge together nice with the same character premise and not fuck up the character premise. Now, with this being said, people need to remember their character premise. If your character is meant to be a total and utter bitch towards somebody, then be a total and utter bitch towards somebody. Example, Akane Tendo from Rum One Half, as long as Rama is not doing anything to piss her off, she's good with him. She's alright. She can understand. If something happens and he seems to have a sentimental moment with her, she's okay with this. But it's when he fucks up or when his pride initially or inevitably takes over, that's when she snaps on his ass. People lose this track. Now, this is where character premise is important. Because if you lose track of the premise, then development and evolution go nowhere. You've already fucked up the premise. You have no base. You're trying to make Empire State Building with no floor. It just ain't gonna work. So, your character premise is pretty much your building block. It's your ground zero. You, you are pretty much taking care of the main floor. You're setting that up. And that's what you want established. You want that to be the firmest spot possible. So even if something happens in development and evolution and it, it gets negated, you can fall back to your floor, or your floor and be good. It's like, okay, I'm hit here. Boom. Done. So once you got your premise set up, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to sit here and beat you guys over the head about premise. I've already gone over a good example with my version of The Rock. I wasn't going to go over details. I'm not going to put all this stuff up, up here with the whole list because, one, I've gotten rid of that character a while ago, and two, that's a whole asshole of reading. Now, when you get your premise done, you move on to development. Development, you're just pushing things along. What do, you, what do you want to see from your character? What do you want to help your character do? It's just roleplay. Yes, it is just roleplay, but if you have no direction with the character, you're going to be one of those people that have like 5,000 alts, and none of them do shit. And you wonder why you're bored. I'm just putting that out there. Now, me being partially an elitist, allegedly, elitist. I tend to test the durability of people to see if they're going to actually run the length because since I'm currently in the military, I have a possibility of going TDY and that, t that possibility of going TDY chucks me out for like six months. So at least the first two months, I probably won't get internet, which means I need to know that the people I roleplay with can handle the longevity of something not being there. I have to do that. And I've yet to really find someone who can actually keep up with it. I mean, i found a couple people who take a while to reply, but they have like over a thousand friends, so... Psh. So, by mathematical logic, it's going to take a while to reply. Cool, I'm with it. Now, if you only have like, say... Five friends, and you only talk to one, there's a mathematical problem, and you probably need to look at But most people who make alts are usually bored with their main. And I want to use quotation figures for main because people go, oh, that's my main, that's my main, and then they are on their alt. Seven times longer than their main. This happens to a lot of people. It's known as altitis. Most people in WoW have heard of this. And they know about this. Ultitis is pretty much where the person, the character that you prefer to use has done something to a point where you're just like, I don't fucking care. I'm going to try something new. So you try out something new and you like it and you stay with it. And then you try something else or you just stay with that new thing. Nim's another good example. Nim's a good example of this. Nim has a warlock. That's his main. And my main's a warrior. Well, I tried Death Knight, I tend to like it, and I liked having a rogue, and I liked having a druid. My main thing is, I like my warrior. My warrior was my main, so I was like, ah! But then again, when I do PvP, I prefer my DK, because I'm just a 
ass clown on with my DK. I just hurt people, and people don't like me because one on one they die. No matter what, it's one on one. They die. They just die. They die. I don't know why. They just die. I'm, I show up and it dies. <laughs> I'm looking around going, what the hell? Why'd you die? <laughs> I mean, my DK is beating every race DK. I mean, every one of them. I think the only thing he hasn't fought was a gnome. And that's because I can't find any. They all run away. That's what the last battleground I took with my DK. He showed up. And I saw one gnome DK. And I'm like, cool, I'm going to kick his ass. And he took off. It was just me and him. And he took off. So I'm like, what the? Does he know that I need a gnome DK to complete my set of... DK ass kickery to prove that I am the one DK to rule the wall. Apparently, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> but character development is something that you do to try to keep your characters fun for you. And this is what happens to a lot of people. They get into the altitis stage. Should be about there. Should say altitis. Um, blah, 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 what it actually is in a nutshell. I just defined it, but it's going to stay up here again. So, when you find yourself wanting to do something else, that tells, that should be your first clue. Ding, ding! You have no character development. Your character development has stopped cold. So, you need to go out and fix that. What do you do to fix character development? Well, if your characters are married, you might want to talk to your partner and be like, hey, to be perfectly honest, I'm not I'm not saying I'm bored with you. I'm just saying my character has no place of development. There is nowhere to go right now. And I'm going to make an alt if I cannot find any regard for character development. I need the character development. I need something to keep me engaged with my main. If I cannot have anything that is going to engage me with my main, then I'm going to go to an alt and start from scratch because usually when you're setting up a character at the beginning it's heavy character development because you're trying to instill character premise we see how important premise is now once you instill your character premise and this is where people this is where people plateau this is where they have issues what they, most people do this is not a bad thing. This happens to everybody, so don't don't think I'm picking on people. What people do, they will do character development when they first make a character. They'll do a lot of character development, da, 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 da. and they hit to a point where they know their premise is set. Now they're a canon character. This is cakewalk because all they do is minimal character development to get back to the premise. That's all they gotta do: minimal character development. But once you get to the premise, boom, it's like they plateau, and they stay there for a little bit. And they kind of hover around here. The premise kind of shifts like this. And they hold their premise. And they got the premise good. They got it good. They're holding. They're holding. They're holding. They're holding. They're holding. Okay, I'm making an ult. You just barely stabilized your premise. And if you stabilized it, then you need to talk to people going, okay, I need something else to develop my character. As opposed to straight cutting off. Example. Laser on AOL has evolved differently than Laser on Facebook. Now, Laser on AOL, he is known as the Omni Weapon. Reason being is because that was his job. He was learning to fight from everybody. Vampires, werewolves, immortals, mortals. He didn't care. He fought everything under the sun. Why? Because he wanted to learn. Then, of course, I was told to stop fighting everybody because it made the other people look bad. <coughs> sad, isn't it? Anyway, I developed him to a point where it's him, and his dark side is still residing within him. But, but, the physical being known as Kagagayu, channel name, ding! That's how I enunciate it, by the way. Kagagayu. That's how I enunciate it. It's probably not how it's supposed to be enunciated, but fuck it. I wrote it out. I made the word up. Mine. That's how I enunciate it. Anyway. Kagagayu represents the actual body. And he stayed separated from Laser, which was still stuck with his dark mode. Now, on Facebook, this went completely different. Facebook-wise, even though it was the same characters, 
Same setup. Because of the situations, I changed his character premise. Well, I didn't change his premise. His premise was the same. But I changed where he went after his premise was initiated. It was settled. Everyone understood it. And once he got there, I started leaning up, and I pushed the character development differently. I started pushing forward like normal. And because I had storylines out there, and people didn't take the hook and line, and then complain to me later that I don't get storylines, even though I told them, hey, this is a storyline, and they didn't follow it, and it or go with it, what the fuck ever. Anyway, I pushed on, and he started evolving in a different light. Now, when he got to his new premise, because of situations, his premise started changing, which again, your premise can change when you do character development. That's what development is for. It's to help, help initiate a new premise for everyone else. Now... It depends on how you do it. If you fuck it up, you fuck it up. I did mine smoothly. For those who've been there the entire year on Facebook with Laser, they've seen that he went from a happy, ha-ha kind of guy all the way to a very cynical, fuck you organics kind of mentality. It was a gradual change because people were fucking up the storyline. So I had Laser go with it. But unlike AOL, where it's Laser and his dark mode Riza still together, the first three months, Riza got the fuck out of there. It was part of character development. I made sure he pulled away from Laser. He kind of put one-on-one together, did a couple things, messed with a few powers, and hey, he found a way to get the fuck out of there. So they are now separated. But because they are separated, it permitted Laser to go nuts, which got Kagagayu unlocked from his seal, and then Laser absorbed Kagagayu, and they formed into one body, which now has Laser walking around hating all organics. Completely! As I sped through that, you kind of got the idea that his premise changed. Where on AOL, he's just, okay, I'm a weapon, my job is to chill, relax, until someone needs to get their ass kicked. Then I show up and I do it. But since most of the time that's not the case, he doesn't worry. But on Facebook, he's become the free, pretty much the cynical, anti-organic person. He hates organics. That He just hates them. Why? Because people were messing with the storyline, and I had to react accordingly. Now, that is character development. Character development is to help your one premise become another premise, so people can understand it without freaking out. You do this multiple times. This is multiple, multiple stacking. Why can you do it multiple times? Because it's simple to do if you do it right and gradually. It's steady. You can't just instantly go, oh, I'm bored, and then make an alt, and then expect your main to suddenly get better. No, it doesn't happen that way. It doesn't. The thing that makes character development so nice and good is if you speak to people you want to speak to, or people you think are important, you need to talk to them, at, at least out of character. I know this is an issue one, but speak to them out of character and say, Hey, I want to do something to get more character development. And if you don't have a plan, then by all means, talk to them out of character. Talk to them and go, Can you give me some pointers? Can you give me some help on how I can come up with new things for me? That would fit my character premise without fucking it up. Instead of consuming magic and learning how to fly like Superman and then using eye beams of last fucking Cyclops out of nowhere. I mean, you don't need all that shit. You don't want to destroy the premise. You just want to add to it. Can she ever use eye beams? Probably not. But can she learn how to throw a Kamehameha? Maybe. If, especially if her husband's Goku? Come on. She's going to have to ask for training from her husband. Character development. Right there. Easy. Yeah, people fucked this up. Character evolution, the last part we're going to talk about. Character evolution comes from constantly adding to your premise. Constantly developing. This is what makes some characters far more known than other characters. An example. My character Saber is less known than Laser. That's just a given. Why? Because Saber doesn't want run around and develop as much. He's already considered like the big time deity in a little section. So, that's it. He's done. He doesn't want to develop anymore. Laser, however, develops 
cons consistently. Every little thing. Even when he role plays with other people that seem like short and pointless, it's actually character development because most of them are organics. And when they're organic, they are trying to, whether they know it or not, whether they realize it or not, they are actually helping Laser understand, okay, not all organics need to be destroyed. Not all organics are proven to the numbers. Laser is very mathematical. If he has a set of numbers, and you fall right into the trap of those numbers, and you prove his numbers right, then he's going to ignore you. He's going to see that you've proven him right. You're nothing more than a virus. Why the fuck ever? You're just an organic that needs to die. Whatever. Most people have already proven that they have fallen into this trap. And the way I say that is because most of them go from in character talking to all of a sudden disappearing. Now, what I mean by disappearing is remember when I say issue number three is metagame knowledge? Even though Laser has the ability to know the fourth ball, he doesn't break it. Often. He breaks it more as a joke at certain times, but it doesn't affect anything outside. Now, if someone just stops talking, because out of character, they get told by someone else out of character, so they start doing the issue 3 bullshit. Laser, who doesn't know any of that, he doesn't care. The person stopped talking for no in-character reason whatsoever. No in-character reason, they just stopped talking to him. Okay, well you proved that you organics have, all you organics have ADD. Absolutely lovely. So now he knows most organics aren't even going to hold attention. One character he speaks to back and forth gets confused really easy. This should usually piss people off. Laser, however, sees it as, well, it's an organic. What did I expect? So he can understand when people get confused. Why? Because that's how he is. He just sees organics as faulty things. They need to be taken care of. It's not his jurisdiction to do it, though. He'll, te he'll say, he'll tell the people, it's not my jurisdiction. So, as he's evolving, he's becoming more and more cynical, but at the same time, he's starting to get his humor back. Why? Because he understands that organics are organics, and they're going to fuck up no matter what. Even if he has the numbers down and he warns them, hey, one and one is still equaling two, and you're about to hit number two. Sure enough, when they hit number two, and he goes, I told you so, they go, no, you didn't. Well, shit, I can bring up the log. Boop. And I go out of character and go, hey, I can bring up the log if you really want to. I can go there. Even though I even said in character a while back, he's recording this, I can go back and get you the log. Normally, they don't want to see the log because they think, oh, you're just going to doctor it. No, I'm not. Here you go. Screenshot. Fuck you, man. And they stop talking. It's like. Which brings my last point up for the day. Character premise, character development, and character evolution. These things are in a constant cycle. Once you get your premise set, continue your character development. When you get more development going, it causes character evolution. When your character evolves a little bit, you get a new character premise, and you start the process over again. Premise. Development. Evolution. Premise. Development. Evolution. Premise. Development. Evolution. You get it? Boom. 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 It's pretty simple. Again, if you have notes, that makes it wonderful. You have less to worry about. Make sure you have notes. Make sure you have something to say, this is why, or this is how they developed. Especially key points. Now, like I said, I'm going to leave you all with one thing to think about. If you make a mistake with your character, and you are in a fight with somebody, and you make the one-line mistake, the one-line mistake of, ask them yourself. If you utter that line, and they have a way to ask that person themselves, and they go and ask that person, and you freak out, out of character, about them asking that person, realize what the fuck you said in character before you even throw a fit. Because chances are, you said it in character, and they're just following in character. Especially if, especially if you say it to, say, any Zanoni, 9 out of 10 Zanoni are going to literally be, be quite literal with you. Well, ask him yourself. 
and I have a way to ask them? Okay, hold on. Hold that thought. I'm going to go ask them right now. And they go and ask. As soon as you say ask, they go to ask. Why? Because it's part of the character premise. Ogres have no problem asking questions. They don't. They prefer to kill things, but they have no problem asking questions. So, be careful what you ask for, because you just might get it. Alright, everybody. Have yourselves a good night. And, uh... I guess I'll see you during the next rant, eh? Later.